to discuss some efficiency ratios. So efficiency ratios let us determine how efficiently the company is being run. And there are a lot of them you can look at. I'm just going to look at a few here. And the reason we use ratios is ratios allow for comparison. You can't just look at the absolute number because a bigger company is going to have larger numbers but the ratio may be very similar to a smaller company. In fact, the smaller company may actually have a better ratio. So um, we're going to calculate inventory turnover as cost of goods sold divided by inventory. So this is how often do you fill up the warehouse and empty it out and then um, during a year. So if you have inventory turnover of one, Essentially, you're filling the warehouse on January 1st, and by December 31st, you've sold everything. You can convert that into days by taking 365 and dividing it by inventory turnover, right? If you had inventory turnover of one, you're holding your inventory essentially for a year. If it's two, you're holding it for about six months, etc. And if you look at companies, um, inventory days sales and inventory has gone down a lot in large part because of computer efficiencies but if you go back you know a few decades you'll find that you can also see the way a company is run so i used to compare dell with hp hewlett-packard and what you found was that for example dell might have three and a half or four days of sales and inventory where Hewlett Packard had 30 or more. Didn't make HP a bad company, they just had a different business model. HP would build computers and stick them in a warehouse and then ship them to Staples or Best Buy or whatever company, you know, uh, whatever retailer needed them. And they also shipped them to companies as well. Dell, on the other hand, built to order. So they didn't build the computer until you ordered it. And so they didn't really hold any inventory of anything. Okay, they didn't hold the inventory of the computers. They didn't hold parts. In fact, they would get delivery of parts daily. In fact, a lot of their, their suppliers would set up their manufacturing facilities very close to Dell so that they could service Dell well. In fact, in some cases, you know, they would deliver maybe more than once a day. Now, Dell had an idea as to how many computers they were going to build every day, so they weren't just sitting around doing nothing. They were always building computers, but they would build only what people wanted. You know, with their corporate partners, I'm sure that they were in touch and had a good gauge as to what was going to be ordered. And they had a reasonably good forecast of people like myself who might buy a computer. Um, another measure of efficiency is what we call asset turnover. So here you take sales divided by total assets and what this does is it gives you an idea as to how well the company uses its assets to generate sales. And you know do they use the assets for things that will make the shopping experience better for example? Um, for example um, Walmart. Walmart was a company that was you know first to have things like scanners and self-checkout. Now everybody has them, but they had those early. And if you read anything about Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, even when they were already a pretty successful company, they spent very little money on perks for, the, for, the, um, for management. So they didn't spend money on posh offices. In fact, I think their, their headquarters, you know, they'd have a meeting in the uh, room that was above their warehouse with folding chairs, you know, on a fold out table. The money they spent, they put into, you know, building good warehouses, you know, putting those scanners in, things that would make things much more efficient for them. Okay. We also might want to look at how quickly you get paid. So here we have receivables turnover. So how quickly are you sort of turning over these uh, payments? And then you have 
days sales outstanding. So, you know, 365 divided by receivables turnover. So you want to get a gauge as to how quickly, you know, you're selling stuff, how quickly you're getting paid, etc. So let's take a look at uh, an example here and how to calculate these. So here we have an income statement and a balance sheet and we're going to need both of these to do some of these calculations. So for inventory turnover it's cost of goods sold divided by inventory. So cost of goods sold being 2006, inventory over here is 501, so we get it's about 4. All right, if we want to calculate the days sales and inventory, right, 365 divided by inventory, so about 91 days, slightly, slightly more than 91 days. Um, so about, you know, th about three months you're holding that inventory for. Asset turnover, we're going to take sales, which is the same as revenues here, 5,000, divided by total assets, 5,606, we get 0.89. And then over here, we're going to count, look at uh, receivables turnover, uh, sales divided by accounts receivable. Again, sales 5,000, accounts receivable 1156, 4.33. And then days sales outstanding 365 divided by 4.33, so around 84 days. So, what do you do with these numbers? Well, you can compare them to a leading competitor, you can compare them to the industry average. Or you might compare them to your own company. Are you getting better? Are you improving your um, asset turnover? Is your inventory turnover better? Or the days of you know that you're holding inventory, are you shortening that? So you can see whether your company is getting better or worse, or how it stacks up relative to other companies. Okay, if you're um, an analyst. You can do this to compare the company you're analyzing, again, with the industry average or with leading competitors to get a gauge as to whether this is a better company or a worse company than um, the average company in the industry or its leading competitors.